What is going on you beautiful humans? I have an accessory here that I actually purchased that I think will help save you some money and give you a little bit more control when it comes to expanding the storage of your iPad Pro or iPad Air Gen 4 and allowing you to scale up to at least two terabytes, well, two terabytes max with a USB-C enclosure from fledging. And of course, one thing that I will link up is a tutorial on assembling this enclosure because there are extremely small pieces uh, to actually secure your NVMe SSD as well as the enclosure. So make sure you've got a clean space to work and really a dedicated space to work. Now, of course, according to the specs I have, this enclosure is compatible with USB-C devices ranging from PCs, Macs, and tablets that have that USB-C compatibility. And I have tested it on the M1 MacBook Air, the iPad Air 2020, so the Gen 4, and featured here, the M1 iPad Pro. Now, as I said before, I did purchase this with my own money and I do have the fledging Thunderbolt 3 NVMe enclosure, which I also purchased. However, whether it was sent to me or I purchased it, I still put it through its paces. I still test it because it is your hard earned dollar, my hard earned dollar. And I actually appreciate from fledging here, the same machining and care and design uh, that they've put into this as well as the function. Now, before I bring you behind the scenes on the setup, let me say that this there is one really big caveat that I do think it's enough to uh, consider an external enclosure with a cable, but it's because that many of us are using cases with our iPads, and even with a very slim case that I have, it still doesn't fit. However, I do use Apple's Magic Keyboard every day, and although this keyboard can accommodate a slim case, which is really nice, you're gonna have to actually go without if you want true plug and play when you want or need it at that moment. And Fledging also states that users are having issues with the 970 Evo line of SSDs from Samsung, and I do happen to have a 970 Evo Plus. So of course, you know I'm gonna test it. And so I did run some tests, and I do wanna confirm that this, that this particular uh, bridge chip is a JMS583, so we are at USB 3.1 Gen 2 throughput here, but I also want to share with you my findings on that 970 EVO Plus. Now, of course, I'm sure plenty of you are interested in transfer speeds, which I often talk about. Transferring a 120 gig folder from the iPad Air Gen 4 to the 970 EVO Plus through the, into the fledging, I was getting approximately 162 megs on that transfer. Now here's the thing, about halfway through the transfer, it just locked up, it just stuck. Like, and so I ended up having to uh, pull that off, like eject it, and then I even tried to put it back on the iPad Air Gen 4 and it wouldn't even recognize it. So I ended up having to go onto my Mac, plugging it into my M1 Mac, and actually running first aid to get that to just kind of zero back out so that I could plug it back into the iPad Air. And I, I tried to repeat and it still locked up halfway through. So your mileage may vary there. Now, what I also did was, is I decided to put the Western Digital SN 750 in the enclosure on the iPad Air and that same 120 gig folder transferred again at approximately 162 megs on that transfer. And it all of that occurred in 12 minutes and 33 seconds. And so pivoting over to the M1 iPad Pro here, what we have is an internal drive of one terabyte. And of course we are dealing with Thunderbolt 3 protocol on the iPad Pro. However, again, we're still rolling back to that 3.1 Gen 2. So transferring from the iPad internal, I decided a larger folder since I have a, a larger internal drive of 240 uh, gigs. And we were getting an average of 640 uh, on that transfer and that occurred in six minutes and 30 seconds. I didn't get any disconnects. There weren't any issues. I tried it several times and it was pretty much the same with the Western Digital SN 750. But really what I wanted to do is just test the 970 Evo Plus since folks were having some issues. But I would say, again, your mileage may vary on iPad OS 15 and developers beta four is what I'm testing it on. Now, something else that I want to bring you behind the scenes, and this is not a LumaFusion tutorial necessarily, but with the latest LumaFusion, you can edit on the external drive. And this is going to be really helpful for those of you that are creating and you have apps that can take advantage of that external SSD. So let me actually show you that. All right, bringing you in here to LumaFusion. But again, this is not a full tutorial. I will be doing more LumaFusion work here. Let me just show you. 
uh, going down to the gear here and bringing this up settings, ducking, and let's go into preferences and to scroll and show you that I am on external drive editing. And of course, when you update to LumaFusion 3.0, it will default to that. So you could turn that off if you need to. And of course, um, just to show you that we are here. So files 970 Evo plus, and this is a video that I've already done, but I decided to just kind of like recreate it and um, wanted to just kind of put it together with like audio tracks here. I'm scrubbing through no issues, like really no issues whatsoever uh, to scrub through. I've got some uh, B roll clips here and just my A roll playing it. on the external, this is not on the internal. And I will do, like I said, I will do more tutorials on LumaFusion, but just kind of wanted to show you that this is a full 4K timeline. So let's go ahead here. And um, what I do want to say is that I had been editing this, so kind of working on this throughout a, a full 24 hour period so that I could just see like if I could uh, close it down, bring it back up, and disconnect and reconnect the drive and i wasn't having any issues with it so i even left it like kind of in a standby like i just closed it down and the drive remained connected when i opened it back up and of course my my uh timeline was still there all right so let's go ahead and export that i'm gonna go to movie and files and this is 4k i decided to just do it in 30 frames video quality extreme audio quality and you can see it's h.264 so then what we do is we click on the export and then it i want it to be on this and i'll just put it in that folder on the 970 evo all right so just wanted to show you that it is in fact blinking to uh, that it is going to the external ssd All right, and I'll throw those values up so you don't have to wait any longer. But as always, you let me know what you think because I do value your opinion. You go out there and rock those faces and do those things that matter. I'll catch you right back here on the next one.